Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail with another game of Scrolls Word today. This is a game that some of you may have seen. This was on Atmos' stream. He wanted to play someone who plays Growth, and I volunteered. And, well, the game that we got here is interesting. You may have noticed from the title that it does have something to do with Quake. So this is my standard Growth deck versus a deck of Decay that Atmos built. And I think this is a valuable game to look at and kind of say, well, this is how Growth kind of works with Decay or doesn't work. At least it gave me a lot to think about after playing. But this is a game where, yay, we're looking from both players' perspectives, so we're going to be able to see Atmos' cards as well. Which is fascinating for me to see, just starting with, I really like my opening hand in this game. Getting a Fertile Soil and Sister of the Fox is an awesome combo to start with, so the Rat King is going to be what goes early for me here. And I mean, right now it's just a matter of, okay, that can give me a good card advantage. Now Atmos' opening hand here. Mire Curse, Witch Doctor, Blight Bear, Brain Lice, Miserwell and Infectious Blight. He has some good poison up front. Plenty of it right there. The Witch Doctor, maybe not as much of an early game play. The Brain Lice is going to be good for card draw. But of course, these are things that I don't know he has in his hands, but he does get rid of the Witch Doctor early. So it is Decay versus Growth, a matchup that we're going to be seeing a lot of right now. And I draw a Mangy Wolf, so I do have the Mangy Wolf Great Wolf thing in my pocket, but I've been finding that I like to get rid of that maybe a little more lately. The Mangy Wolf that can come, there are ways for me to speed up the deck. Which is advantage number one that Growth has over Decay. Decay has very few ways to speed up its deck. There are some cards that will speed up Undead, but the Undead creatures in Decay are not the best creatures in Decay's deck. Whereas Growth can speed up a lot of things. So if there's one advantage to press is Growth over Decay, it's that you can get your units to attack multiple times. Note, that's one mistake I made here. Now he does get, now Atmos does get an Oblivion Seeker, which is a good card especially in that it'll get uh, it'll get two cards if you kill it, but the more important thing is he plays the Mizma well here, sort of tipping his hand to what he maybe has early on. There's not too many two drops in Decay here. But the important thing about Oblivion Seeker is that it is a three health kind of wall. It's great protection against, say, a veteran or a kinfolk veteran because, yes, I can kill it if I want to punch through to something else, but I'd give him two cards to kill it, so kind of a tough play. You, one wonders why it cost 5 decay. That's one reason why. So you notice I didn't play my sister next last turn, and part of it was because I wanted to wait this turn, give him something to think about. I did misplay there and not play my sister until after sacrificing. I shouldn't have done that. But he gets a new, Atmos gets a nutrition. He does sport the nutrition puppet soldier combo here. But otherwise, gets rid of it because right now there's not a lot on the board to necessarily save for it. Drops a Blight Bear up top, and Blight Bear is interesting in that it attacks and gets poisoned every time it attacks. But because there is the Mizma Well out, that means that it's only going to get two attacks. So Mizma Well kind of cuts into Blight Bear's value a little bit, but it can make it especially devastating if you can kill it on the right row. But there's my Fertile Soul. You see, I waited to him to put it on. Atmos could have put Brain Lice possibly on that sister but he wanted to get out a creature instead and as a result i was able to sneak in the fertile soul get some extra cards there however he does have an oblivion seeker he does have an Ilmire hunter he's going to be able to start putting a lot of nasties on the board here and probably it's the Ilmire hunter first because you want to get as many of those attacks as you can and now we're going to see significant misplay the first here now i don't know there's a few things that i could look and say i did to be honest feel the pressure of maybe 80 or so people watching this game, which is odd to think about when my day job, I have hundreds of people watching me do what I do, and lives are on the line sometimes, and it doesn't phase me one bit, but hey, fictional card game, who knows? Uh, two o'clock in the morning my time, having to shush my daughter. If y'all know why I wasn't concurrently streaming or anything for this, it's because my daughter was crying throughout this as well. But no excuses for the play that I make here, especially knowing what I know already. Can you guess what I do wrong? I get a ragged wolf. I have two quakes. Quakes are a great thing to destroy all kinds of things, and I punch the Dragon Wolf and put him on the Blight Bearer. Okay, what's wrong there? That Blight Bearer is still going to die in two attacks no matter what. If I double Quake for whatever reason, the Ilmar Hunter will survive with one health. If I had attacked with the Ragged Wolf, that may have made it work a little bit more, but I didn't, so I don't. So that was a bit of a screw up there for that kind of play, but it's still early in the game. Uh, Atmos is in a better position with 
just what he has on the board right now, especially with me kind of poking the wrong creature. It felt like a good idea at the time, so that's what many people say. So now you see he's tucking his Ilmar Hunter. My attack of opportunity is gone. Mize and Wall still doing additional damage to the Blight Bearer. I have five resources. I can up it to six. And I have some really good cards. The Veteran's really good. The Great Wolf's really good. The Brother of the Wolf. Very important for pumping out creatures, but if I kill the Blight Bearer with anything, that creature's going to get poisoned. What I really want to do is smack around the Hunter, but that's not there right now. So instead of playing for Quake, I sack for stuff. I play Sister, get another Fertile Soil, which is an exciting card, because that means I can draw even more cards. So I do have a Double Quake, which I kind of think of as insurance, but remember that bad thinking for later on, because that's not the right call, as you're going to see. Atm is, on the other hand, getting the Puppet Soldier, having gotten rid of the Nutrition, but he does have the resources to possibly play an Infectious Blight, or if not that, the Ilmar Rodier. He could actually play Infectious Blight and kill any of these creatures in one turn and it'll hop because Infectious Blight does its damage at the beginning like most other poisons. But what are we going to do here? He could play the Rod Eater, try and get more creatures on the board, but he elects to Blight my Brother of the Wolf, which is a smart move because it's the most threatening creature I have. Now it's going to die in two turns no matter what. Which leaves me in the sticky situation of, I could Quake! I'll get no value from my Fertile Soil. I could Fertile Soil my sister, but what's three damage from this guy going to do? Not a lot, if anything. So, I mean, it's just a matter of... I could try and protect against some idle damage. I can try and do some damage of my own. All kinds of things to do. I get a rallying as well. And I've played some Decay, so I should know better with some of what I'm doing here. Because I did get another Fertile Soil as well. My eyes are just lighting up as many cards as I get. But rallying is probably not the card I should have sacrificed. Looking back on this, I have two Veterans, two Great Wolves... Fertile Soil, I have a lot of great tools, but getting fixated on the Quakes with him having this many creatures on the board kind of does me in, but hey, that's that's growth. It's like, Dirt, Quake, whatever. Quake, 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 we win. Now, obviously, it's all about the follow-up with the Quake, but you got to get yourself in the position to Quake correctly first, and that is actually a skill. And if I didn't mention it before, I know it's in the description. Uh, this is a game that's all about decision making right here and Atmos right now is making really good decisions smartly drops the rod eater just in time to have uh, the blight bearer die before it attacks so it didn't actually do damage um, which is an accidental hooray on my part for sparing that so the rod eater is immediately a 4-4 creature but see if you want to know the difference between an 1800 rated player like me and a top rated player like Atom is a lot of it starts and ends with making the correct decisions here and for me when I'm looking at my hand I can fertile soil here as well I can get all kinds of good things on the board I could kill this harvester possibly in two turns with veterans or something like that but I keep going back to the quakes and I just maybe it's from habit of playing other resources especially when I get overwhelmed by order sometimes if those quakes can really 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 make a difference but this is Decay, and Decay is a different resource. And creatures like Harvester and creatures like Rod Eater will really punish you for Quake. Because I have a Rallying here. Rallying's going to speed me up and possibly let me do better. But if I Quake, Quake, Quake to kill everything, this Harvester is going to survive an attack. This Rod Eater could continue to get buffed and get more attack, more health. Atmos, on the other hand, though, at this point is top decking, which is something that I wasn't paying attention to, but really should have at this, at this stage. But that's not, once again, it comes down to decision making and knowing what's going on. He does have six resources for the Witch Doctor, which is better than the nutrition that he hasn't yet have to, had to use here. So he can just drop everything down, play the Witch Doctor. And he has such, such, such good control of my entire board. Pretty much right now, he has all the pressure. Because I've been sitting and idly drawing my cards, I have a bunch of great cards. I have so much I can do. Give me two or three turns and I can blow this game open. But the, quite, but the problem is right now, do I blow the game open or do I just go for the Quake, Quake, Quake and risk taking a lot of damage? Because two Quakes isn't going to kill Witch Doctor. Two Quakes isn't going to do the Ilmire Hunter. But at this point, I've played myself into the position where, well, if Quake's the play, that's what I'm going to do here. So this Rod Eater not getting a benefit from structures. It's just creatures. No extra draw from the Oblivion Seeker. But he does have another Mizma. Well, Atmos has got to be smelling the Quake at this point. I mean, there's there's no other way. It's just plainly obvious. Especially as, you know, that's what growth does. 
we quake and then we complain about the game being too hard. But here we go. You see he's placing the rod eater in a place where it'll be surrounded by units. And what's a little interesting to me is I wonder, at least going into this, if I quake, one of the questions that I had is we have one of my favorite attack animations from Decay by the Oblivion Seeker. My first idol goes down. But one thing that I'm curious about from the rod eaters, if I quake... Will it die from the quake instantly, or will this unit die first and buff the Rod Eater one health and it survive? That's something I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how these on death effects work. But the really scary thing to me is that if I quake here, then this idol is going to die. This unit's going to go up. The Harvester is going to be able to attack. So part of my brain is saying, no, 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 no. Don't quake. Play the veteran, take out the witch doctor. That's going to make the harvester attack and I'll lose the veteran anyway. So I kind of run it back and forth in my mind. I could have dried it, powered the veteran. It still would have died though. But I get some other units out as well. And there's the quake and there's the husk. See what the problem is there? I say I just killed myself. And that's where we're starting to get the uh, decisions going back and forth once again. But yeah, this is a game where I am not playing my best at this point. But it is still good to see growth. And if you're not, it's good to see growth versus decay because you got to play it to start to learn it. And just as a valuable advice, don't just focus on the games you win if you're watching this, if you want to improve. Sometimes you've got to look at games again and again and say, where did I screw up? Where did I do things wrong? Because there's a lot that I did wrong here. For the viewing pleasure of a lot of people on Atmos' stream, is Atmos having a great follow-up denying... Two things that I like about his move here. He denies my ability to kill this with a veteran. If I have a third quake, I could play it as the triple quake. Why not that be a problem? Except that if I do quake here, he places the rod eater and it would get plus three, plus three. So it would be a 6-4 uh, creature just because all these other units dying around it. And I'm not sure if that hunter would turn into a husk or if the witch doctor would die. But we're not going to find out because first of all, favorite attack animation for melee... And then as these idols fall, we get my hand. Now, as I was doing that second quake, I thought to myself, my 2 a.m. brain, saying, you know what? I may be down to one 2 health idol with a relentless unit bearing down on it, but I feel great about my chances. Because look at all these cards. Three great wolves, two veterans, two ancestral totems, a brave, pother. I have so many things I can play. I've come back from losing two idols early before. <sighs> as Atmos makes the astute observation, Quake may not be that good against Decay, which is true. I think Quake is a card that you can afford to sacrifice far more so against Decay because it really plays into their hands. But you can see I play the Brave, I play the Veteran. I'm really looking to take down both of these if I can just Veteran and knock this back next turn. But there's a Languid. Languid, a card that's easy to forget about if you're not paying attention. It pretty much locks down the Kenfolk Brave for the most part just because... It takes away two and it does an attack. And you can see, or it takes away two and it draws a scroll. As Atma is getting a lot of scrolls back, he still has four resources that he can play with here as well. If he wants to do something like Infectious Blight, if he wants to do something like a Curse Monger, but he's going to play the Rod Eater down here. So once again, if I elect to do something shady, these units are going to be buffed. But at this point, he's got pressure on two of my idols now. These Harvesters probably aren't going to attack. Looking back, maybe they're not the biggest threat. But I do pother, because the pother, at least in my mind, I'm either going to Ragged Wolf if it pops down here, or I'm just going to move up here. And I could Ragged Wolf, but I also have the Ancestral Totem. So what I do here is a little bit of a Skullduggery, I guess you could say. Play the other veteran just to take out the Harvester. And actually drop the Ancestral Totem to buff the attack by one, so I don't even need to play the Ragged Wolf at this point. I can save it. I don't have another Pother here, but Atma's having plenty of things he can work with here. I have one idol that's going to be down to five damage. I did nothing to defend it here because I'm still worried about this Harvester, but there's Infectious Blight. It's going to be doing one poison damage right now, so this guy's going to be dead in two turns. But you see in his hand here, Atma's having the Mizma Well, dropping it. I could, if I really want to, take it out with a veteran if I have another veteran in my hand. But now, this one's going to die. This one's going to pop around. And, unfortunately, what I didn't realize at myself when I wasn't paying attention, because I remember looking up, 
and thinking, wow, wait, where'd my veteran go that was supposed to attack? Forgetting that this Ilmar Rod Eater was actually about to attack. So additional misplay, additional lack of situational awareness. And here we go, my last stand. I have another idol here with so many units dying. This Harvester can break through this line and kill everything. If I had a rallying, I could do a lot better job. But I've already gotten rid of so many rallyings. I have another Pother. But unfortunately, Pother isn't going to do me a whole lot of good. I do Ragged Wolf to get rid of the Harvester, which is kind of the rock in a hard place area here. I don't. I save the Pother just to see, and I sort of cross my fingers and say, you know, I've played really bad, and I knew I played bad by this point. Going to try to power the Great Wolf, and my words here are uh, not because I knew anything that he had or was going on, but because it's just obvious at this point. He hasn't played Damning Curse all along. Damning Curse is an immediate kill. Even Drydic Power is not going to do any good against that. And he has a unit here that can at least do damage. My idol will be totally exposed. But I did get down his two Harvesters, so that counts for something. But there is a great play. Soul Steal by Atmas. And then we're going to see a slight misplay by Atmas here. But you know what? He still wins the game. If he had moved that Shambler down, oh no, he could have made it a 6-4. But no, great play there. And in case you missed what happened... As some people watching live are like, what in the world happened because he was sitting on his turn until about the last five seconds. He soul stole his husk, which buffed this to 4-4. Four, four. Then he cast Damning Curse, which killed the Elmire Hunter, which dropped this to 5-4 because it still took one health damage. And that five damage was enough to take out the idol. So what did I learn from this game? Quake, don't just go for it. It's going to be better to play your creatures and try and keep pace because growth and decay can both be really good at getting creatures out. Of course, you have to be careful and try and dodge the nutrition puppet soldier combo, which I knew Atmos was playing because I'd seen him play earlier that night. What I also learned is that growth's ability to speed up its cards, move faster, attack more, rallying, mangy wolf, god hand, those are things that are going to help stay at least on par or ahead of the curve against Decay. But still, it's early. Who knows how the metagame is going to shape or change. But for now, at least hopefully this game was entertaining or educational. And I know Atmos was hoping for maybe a more competitive game on the stream. Sorry, that's what happens. But hey, that's it for now. This is Way to Fail. Hope you all enjoyed this game. I will see you all next time. All right, 50 episodes. Whoopity-doo! See ya.